everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, as I was driving here this evening, you know, I was just thinking, how many times in our lives do we think, you know, that's not possible, that that, that boundary, that limitation that we think in our lives is just is not overcomable. And yet, so much of our lives are, are based on that limitation, that limited view of our, of our own experience. And yet, there are so many scientific studies that we only use a really small part of our brain. And yet, still, there's that so much internal skepticism and external skeptic, skepticism about what this inc incredible, glorious human form, this incredible spirit in human form can do. And you know, when people tell me, well, that's not possible, or this isn't possible, or that's a limitation that we have to live with because we're humans. I mean, most of that, or all of that in a way, is coming from our reason. The reason is that it's never been done before, or we can't conceive of it, or at this point in our lives, or at this point in our development, we can't do it. But think, think of the root of our existence on this planet. We're hurtling through space on a ball. I mean, think of being on this earth, hurtling through this incredible magnificence, this incredible galaxy of hundreds and hundreds of galaxies, of hundreds of hundreds of planets. And we think we know what's possible and what's reasonable. The entire existence here, the entire experiment, this entire human creation in a way is unreasonable. It's beyond our conception of things. It's beyond our way of looking at limitation, of looking at the, the, the levels that we can go to. And yet there are some people on this planet who, whose job it is, whose destiny it is, to break those limits, to say, no, this is possible now. That you can do this. You can do this in a human body. That you can do this in love and in joy. And tonight, and you, and you know, if you watch this show, that that's what this show is about, to, to expand those boundaries to whatever level we think is possible to go beyond that. Because in my life, I've seen that there is a place, there is a way a human being, any human being, a human being from Brooklyn, New York, a human being from Australia, a human being from Germany, a human being from Africa, all these types of people have been on Bridging Heaven and Earth can have an experience of love, of truth, of oneness, of exceptional gifts and experiences and ways to live in this life that are almost incomprehensible in that limited way of looking at our lives. So tonight we have with us two people whose lives are, are manifestations of that, examples of that, and just joyous movements in that love and in that breaking of the boundaries and those limitations that we put on, on ourselves. Uh, we have Jazz Maheen, who's a world-renowned breatharian researcher. She's a spiritual teacher. She's a founder of the Self-Empowerment Academy. She's written 14 books, uh, Ambassadors of Light, uh, Living on Light. And, and the extraordinary thing about her, the way we would look at it from our skeptical way of looking at things, is that she has lived without eating food as we know it, just living on the energy in the air, living on the prana as it's known, living on the energy, letting faith and love fill her with the nutrition that we think only come from a certain format in our limited way of looking at it. And she's here to describe how that works in her and how that love moves through her joyously. And it's more about that, how that, jo that joy and love move through her than the actual fact whether she eats or doesn't eat, how she does it or how she doesn't do it. But to see her move through this life, breaking those boundaries for herself and others, that's the true magnificence of Jasmine's experience here and, and what she's going to share with us. And we also have Kailash, who's a sound therapist, an inner world musician, and he studied with indigenous medicine people all over the world in different, in different cultures. He's the first German didgeridoo player. He has over 10 years experience in sound therapy. And his music is really a gateway to, to that experience of love, to that experience of, of no boundaries, of no time, of no space, of no boundaries, of no limitation. And that's an experience that we can have today, tonight, tomorrow, and, and every day and day and day from here on in. It's just being open to that. Break down those barriers of what you think is possible because you're bigger than that, you're more than that, and the glory that you are can be revealed. So please join us tonight and let that experience carry us into ever higher levels of love. Because really, in a human body, when all those barriers break down, what it feels like is love. So join us tonight and hopefully 
settle into that, and, and more love will fill us all. So as we normally do, just to settle in, join me for a short meditation, and then we'll start with uh, Kailash. Thank you. So we're going to begin tonight's show with Kailash doing inner world music. Now, just remember that these have the potential, if we're open to them, to have the healing effects of sound. Sound is just an incredible vehicle for opening those inner guides, those inner portals. And this is one of the oldest wood instruments in the world. It's the didgeridoo. It comes out of the Aborigine culture in Australia. So whenever you're ready.
Fantastic. Thank you, Kailash. So we're on the set with Jasmine. Why do you think, Jasmine, that people are so skeptical of, of you being able to get your sustenance from the air or the prana? Why do you think that is? It's just new information, that's all, Alan. You know, we used to think that people couldn't walk on the moon. We used to think the earth was flat. And it's just a new level of education that needs to come to pass. And when it does, it'll be normal. You know, 20, 30 years ago, it was very uncool to be a vegetarian. Where did you get your protein from? Now doctors say, be a vegetarian, it's good for you. Well, maybe in 20, 30 years, people will go, hey, live on light. It's really a good form of nourishment. And how did you start? How did that come to be, you know, your way of, of expressing your love and, and manifesting it? Well, I guess it depends on what reality people want to exist within. You know, I exist in a reality that we are really spiritual beings here to have a human experience. And I also exist in a reality that, about destiny. And for me, when I look back on my life and my training, this was my destiny. I'm very interested in bringing the best of information from the East to the West. I think that's very important. The best of the information from the West to the East, just sharing good quality information. And the yogis have lived on light for thousands of years. It's nothing new. It's just new to have a Western woman talking about prana. But I don't talk about prana. I talk about the power of the divine. and. I've been dancing with the divine for like 35 years, consciously, you know, from a child. So it was just my destiny to um, make a bit of noise about this. It's part of the cosmic marketing plan, you know, to, to allow people to understand there's a power inside us that is so incredible and so magnificent. And a small, small gift of, of that power when we work with it is that it will nourish us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how did you, I mean, how, what was the first time when you said, well, I'm going to manifest it this way, I'm going to... I mean, was yeah. there a, a, an no, evolution yeah. of that? Well, I was a vegetarian for over 20 years, and I'd been meditating for well over 20 years as well. So to me, it was just like one step after another. I just meditated every day and, and day in and day out and experienced that power within myself and um, started telepathic communication, which was interesting. I, I really feel that every human being is naturally telepathic. I began communication with a group of beings I call the Ascended Masters. Um, I call them my cosmic colleagues. And I really feel that this is the way of the future for humanity. So it wasn't like a point where I can look back and go, yep, I'm going to live on light. It was never about that. It was an accident. You know, I went through a spiritual initiation, and from that I discovered that a byproduct of that 
that initiation was that I didn't need to take nourishment from food anymore. And after a few years of living on light, I thought, well, wow, if I can do this, perhaps it has application to world health and world hunger-related issues. You know, like every second second a child dies of hunger-related diseases. And I thought, well, that doesn't have to be, maybe. So then I spent the next four years putting together the Ambassadors of Light book and our solution for world hunger, which is great. And, and the reception to that has been mixed because some people, mm -hmm. as I said at the open, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Jasmine King's been staying, well, she came and stayed, we, we had the afternoon together, and, and I said, I mean, this is the 104th show, and we had probably over 200 guests, and the most skeptical Reaction. response yeah. has been that this person yeah. is going without normal yeah. eating for seven years. Yeah. And it's interesting because of all the extraordinary things that have happened. We've had channels on, a channel, so not, you know, all yeah, extraordinary yeah, yeah. gifts and extraordinary things, yeah. that that would be the one that people pick out as like impossible. Yeah. It's because also we're emotionally addicted to eating. The physical body has cellular memory of when we lived on light, when we first came into physical embodiment eons ago. But the emotional body has forged quite a powerful addiction to pleasure from food. And we've not been educated differently. I just um, have found this source of nourishment that I call prana, that the yogis call prana, others call the universal life force, Christians call God, and it has an incredible capability. Um, and the most amazing thing is like 10 years of scientific research has been done on this by the Chinese Qigong masters. So the research is in, it is a fact, and people just got to get used to it because it's going to happen more and more. Mm -hmm. Whether they believe it or not, you know, we didn't believe in telephones or, or televisions and all these amazing things, but we now accept them as everyday reality. You know, Arthur Schopenhauer, the German philosopher, once said, when new information comes to the world, first it's ridiculed, then it's violently opposed, then it's accepted as being self-evident. Yeah, there's something about the Tao. How yeah. do you know the Tao is true because everybody... <laughs> says it's not true. Yeah. I call the the TAO, the D-O-W, the divine one within, and, and that's where the power comes from. There is a force that exists in a cellular level and an atomic level. Quantum physicists say that 99.9% .9 of an atomic structure is space. I see that as being filled with consciousness, and one of the um, abilities of this consciousness is that it produces all the nutrients and nourishment and minerals the body needs when we can tap into it. We can only tap into it through a spiritual lifestyle. And so when you develop this spiritual lifestyle, it almost was an outgrowth of that. Yeah. And so you go around the world teaching that that is one possible because you're an example of it. And, yeah. and if you can do it, there's no yeah. reason anybody else can That's do right. it. Yeah. And, and do you have like techniques or, or methods that people can use to, to tap into that? And really it's tapping into love and you're just yeah. using one aspect yeah. of it, right? It's the power of love. When we really allow that love to flow through our body, it does nourish us. You know, it nourishes our soul. A lot of people talk about the light within and this light, not only can you see it, but you can um, feel it and you can feel this vibration behind the breath when you meditate. So one of the most important things that I feel for people on this journey is a connection with the Divine One within and, and you get that through time in silence, time through going in the inner realms. You know, we have the internet and we have the inner net and as above so below and when you get tuned on the inner net all sorts of miracles happen. Yeah. So it's just a so matter of, of turning like the attention inner. Inside. inside. Um, you know, we spend so much time working with the five senses outside of ourselves, but we also have the sixth sense of intuition and what I call the seventh sense of knowing. And when people hear about living on light, it, two things happen. They either go impossible or why would you? Or they go, yeah, that feels right. I know that could be true. And that's the seventh sense kicking in. That's the sense of, I know that I know, but I don't quite know what it is that I know, but I know that I know it, you it's, know? Yeah, and you it's know scientifically, it's right. yeah, right. forget right. it at the moment. Right. But you just know, and it's the same with this. There's this power that you can work with that guides you and just really brings miracles in your life. And a small, 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 small gift of that is that it feeds us. Mm -hmm. Right.
And that's because great. Because really, I mean, if it fed us and we didn't feel good doing it and then we didn't feel joyous and we didn't feel Why loving, did what I? would be the point? What would be the point? Right. And you know when things come from that divine source because you feel so joyous. You know, when this initiation was first given to me, I just, every cell of my body went, yeah, this is my next step, this is right for me. And honestly, if someone had have said seven years ago that one day you would be standing in front of the world challenging the medical profession, the scientific community and the media, I would have run a thousand miles. Miles. No way. I didn't feel that I had the courage and I still don't because it does take a lot of courage. But you know, when you tap into that source of energy within you and you allow it to love you, you can't deny it. Well, it's the you that has no courage isn't, isn't really there at that time. Yeah, I mean, you almost have big. to step. Yeah, it's bigger than, yeah, it's <laughs> it's bigger than a small way of looking yeah. out or limit, limited self. You know, and it's funny because a lot of people say, oh, you're a fraud or you're this or it's impossible. And it's like, gee, if I was going to make up a game, I'd make up a less, a less, um, difficult one because it's it is tough. It's been very difficult to be a pioneer in the West, even though it's not new, and cop the flack, so to speak, that we cop because people don't understand the power of the divine. But you know, like I was 17 and I, I was taught to meditate, and the very first day I meditated, I just my whole head exploded with light, so much light in my whole body, and and with the light came love, just wave after wave after wave after love, and I just went. Wow, that's who I am. Cool. I'm not my mind. I'm not my emotions. I'm not my body. I'm something else. And it just developed over 25 years. And everybody's that same thing. And, and everyone's that. that. Everyone in there, yeah. in here, is this source of power that I call Tao power, divine power, or prana power. And when you unleash it in your life, it's like, oh, revelation, ecstasy, incredible. Living on light is pittance. It's nothing in comparison to what it can do. You know, it's phenomenal, phenomenal. And, 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 you know, we talked a little this afternoon, and that's really, I mean, you said you were at a, at a gathering, and 60 or 70 percent, a really high percentage of people said that they can believe that yeah. that was really possible, yeah. which, you know, yeah. seems like a yeah. high number, but it's almost like the hundredth monkey, yeah. that that quantum experience yeah. is starting to happen. I, t I, I try and stay out of religion because I have a lot of people who follow Buddhism and, and, and Christianity and Judaism and all sorts of religions come to talk to me about living on light. So I've tried to bring it back to the fact that this is a biocomputer, mind is a software program, life is the printout of the two. And to me, when I've tuned into spirit, I've been advised that more than 80% of people have been encoded with the programs as a computer to live on light. So it's just the way that we're going to go. And I meet and thousands of people around the world. And the other 20% work on this show. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> well, the other 20% are new souls coming through and they no. need to experience the pleasure of food, you know, because no, food yeah. is just such a, such yes. a buzz. It's, yeah. it's so pleasure. It's emotionally bonding, you know. Like a lot of people go, wow, if I didn't eat, what would I do to fill my time? Because there's no cooking, there's no shopping, there's no dishes. You've got, you don't sleep much, so there's lots of extra time. And people say it must be so boring, and it can be a problem. Apart from um, social alienation, people go, well, I've got all this extra time, what do I do? But you know, when you're committed to, to your life to serve, which is my focus, then you're never bored because you're in purpose and you're in passion with everything you do. Yeah, actually, we had somebody on the show last week, Michael Beckwith from L.A. in the Gothic Church, and it's like, he's on fire, and you're, you know, it's yeah. like there's that fire of mm. devotion, dedication. I mean, those are all words, and, you know, yeah. it's devotion to what, and you can ask yeah. all those questions. Yeah. It's basically, it's just the fire of love, yeah. and, it, and it moves us yeah. wherever we get moved to. And you can't deny it, and if you do, it kicks you up. Bottom. Very quickly now. Very right? quickly. <laughs> right. So it's like, you know, part of me wants to run away sometimes because it's really, it's tough, you know, like you get, you get called a fraud and you get called this and all the rest of it. And sometimes I just go, oh. And, and somebody said to me once, when God was handing out assignments, Jasmine Heen was completely drunk. And I thought about that and I thought, yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, however, it's just Because you way. had to be drunk to accept this one, is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because you wouldn't be in your right mind to accept this sort of assignment. And then people say, well, she's delusional. You know, she's absolutely um, lost the plot. And it's like, well, if losing the plot means you have a vision of a world in peace without war, without famine, without poverty, without, without separation, hunger, without, without separation, then yes, I'm delusional because that's my vision and that's my world. Well, I mean, and that's really the way it is. I mean, yeah. the other thing is the illusion of the separation the illusion of not experiencing mm. the one love. And the limitation. And you know, who said you can only get nourishment from food? 
That's right. rubbish. There's a source of nourishment within us we can tap into. And not only does it nourish ourselves and keeps us healthy, but it nourishes our souls. Yeah, and we just glow and we spread that love. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. Okay, so in terms of spreading that love, uh, uh, Kyla, she's going to come on with a second set. And just allow that music. This, it, the music can be a sacred key to dimensional gateways. It can be a bridge to that source within that we're talking about. And, and I know when, when Kailash plays his music, it, it's like a prayer for peace and healing. And there have been, from what he, he's, he's been at my house for the last few days, that the stories of, of people who have come to him after they've listened to his concerts of just healings and, and amazing stories of, of transformation. So for the next little bit of time, just settle in and let that music carry you. So enjoy.
Wow, thank you. That was magnificent. Wow. So we're back on the set with jazz. So we were talking earlier today, and, and people obviously, after listening to you, think this is an extremely difficult process and a hard process mm -hmm. and something that their limitations won't allow them to do. But we were talking today, and you were saying how really simple it is. Why don't you talk yeah. about that a little? Well, it's taken me seven years of a lot of experimentation and playing with this to get to a point where I can share something in two minutes with someone that will allow them to live on light. And that is coming from the basis that this body is a, a computer and it can be programmed by our mind. And it's as simple as just saying, to, if you're interested in living on light, tuning into the divine one within in the meditation or when you're doing your healing work, working with Reiki or, or any energy work you're doing, and simply saying, as the energy flows through, through you, feed me. Mm? It's that simple. Nobody's ever said that, that there is an energy that can feed us. And that is holding a mindset, an energy expectation that all my vitamins, all my mineral, everything that I need to maintain a fully healthy, vital, strong, regenerative body, vital body, using body if you want that too, um, can come from prana, that this can be um, maintained from the divine force within. You know, when you talk to people and you say, 
those who believe in a higher power. If you say, do you believe that this, what you call God, Supreme Intelligence, Allah, Brahma, whatever you name it, do you believe it's all powerful? Do you believe it's all knowing? Do you believe it's everywhere? If people go yes, yes, yes to that, that's enough. Because that power exists within us, it breathes us, it keeps us alive. So it's just a matter of asking in prayer, in meditation, or commanding or expecting that as it moves through you, as it sustains you energetically, that it feeds you as well. Just a mindset, that's all. So I'm meeting thousands of people all around the world now who are living on light because they're indulging in a spiritual lifestyle that tunes them to that frequency of the light to the degree where they're no longer hungry anymore. And now that they know that there are thousands of people out there who live on light, it's an acceptable mindset. And they go, well, they can do it, we can do it. And it really is that simple. It's that simple. And also there's been some scientific research that you've been involved in. So yeah. for people whose skepticism won't allow it to say, believe it on faith or on yeah. that yeah. yes, 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 knowing, yeah. there have been scientific ones. Yeah. You talk a little about that? Yeah, I've been involved in a lot of research since I decided that perhaps it was a solution to world hunger. And I'd like to say that, you know, in the last few months we've contacted every single president of every uh -huh. country in this world all the heads of the major food organizations and welfare organizations and said we now have a book that has a solution for world health and hunger which is 35 years of research not just mine but others do you want it nobody has got back to us but the president of the united states the office of the president of the united states contacted us and said we'll get back to you that's cool so we've been doing a lot of serious research nothing like the chinese the chinese are way ahead of us in this this is nuclear physicists who've been doing research with the qigong masters and you can find out about that by doing www.qigong.net okay so you go to the qigong sites you can find that I've been conducting two years intensive research and studying the work of, of the Austrian doctor Karl Graninger and he found that um, the people who lived a very virtuous lifestyle were very spiritually minded post-Russian war coming out of concentration camps there are a number of women and children who are living successfully on light so we've done a lot of research. I interviewed over a hundred people living on light and put that research in my Ambassadors of Light book as well. So a lot of the research is, has been done, but it comes down to the lifestyle. Quality thinking, quality feeling, quality feeding creates a quality life. And so when you practice a lifestyle that allows you to be physically fit, emotionally fit, mentally fit and spiritually fit, then all sorts of miracles happen, including the ability to live on light. And, and while it's hard for people to believe, it's just part of human potential. You know, doctors and scientists say they understand less than 2% of human physiology. I'm interested in the other 98%. That's a big percentage. You know, that's a big percentage. <laughs> and, oh, you know, I travel the world and I meet the most incredible people doing incredible things that blow people's minds. Like the Chi Masters, a broken bone, x-ray it, send Chi into the arm, heal the bone within five minutes to 30 minutes using prana, x-ray it, bone healed. Proof. You know, there's some exciting stuff happening on the planet and it's just nice if we can suspend our disbelief and um, not believe everything we read, not believe everything we hear, but do some research, you know. Key in um, what you're interested in in the internet and you'll find all sorts of research being done on many things, not just living on light. Mm -hmm. And how, how, I mean, we've talked about this a lot on the show, how does one develop that discernment and develop, as you said, that lifestyle that, mm -hmm. that feeds the knowing and feeds the, the gifts, one of which might be living on light or other gifts. I mean, how, how, it's what so would... It's so simple. It's so simple. You know, the Divine One that dwells within this body, like the Siddhas and the Yogis and, and people who follow this sort of lifestyle I follow, they say that um, it dwells within this body because it's a temple. And it dwells here. The heart is the doorway. Um, it's where spirit is actually based. It's the doorway between the realms of spirit and matter. And spirit lets you know, the Divine lets you know when you're in trouble and you're living to your potential because you feel joy. It does this. It's so cool. I got to show you. 
the Tao, the Divine One within dwells in the heart. And, and when you're on track, it lets you know by smiling in your body. It's what I call the Cheshire Cat smile. It starts here and joy just floods your heart. And the whole muscles here constrict, constrict right up the throat. And a smile comes up like this. And you're just grinning and grinning and grinning. And you're so embarrassed by how much you're grinning and you can't stop grinning. But you can't take the grin off your face because you're not controlling it. Because the Tao is going right on. You're on track here. Go, girl. So it's like, go, girl. It's like joy and smile and it's like yes and you know when you're on track because you get it It's like yes, it feels so good. It's that voice of intuition Everybody knows. And it's not dependent on anything. Nah, nah, it just happens spontaneously Everybody knows when you follow your gut instinct your intuition It's cool when you ignore it big problems and the beauty is is in your heart in my heart in every single human's heart There is this power this energy that you can align with and when you do Smiles, just your cat smiles, you know, and miracles happen. Grace comes into your life. You know, synchronicity comes into your life. Magic comes into your life. You're always in the right place at the right time. You meet the right people. You make the right connections. It's what I call living in the zone, and it's addictive. You know, it when, feels so oh, much better than woo. living in disharmony. Oh, when I first had that experience when I was young, it was like I was addicted, not to the light, but to the love. When you start to experience, like romantic love is a shadow of divine love. And when you really experience divine love, you just go, I want more. I want more, I want more. And you just end up living, structuring your life so you can have the more because there's no mystery to the divine. There's no mystery to God. It's a mathematical formula. If you meditate, if you pray, if you do programming, if you live a vegetarian diet, which I really promote. I do not promote living on light, but I promote vegetarianism for resource sustainability and health of our body. You know, in 2050, we'll have between 9 and 11 billion people living on this planet, and unless we adopt a vegetarian diet, we will not have the resources to feed them. Right now, we have all the resources to feed everybody, but they're not distributed equally, you know, as well as they could be. So the meditation, the prayer, the programming, vegetarian diet, exercise, treat the body like a temple, serve, do something every day for someone else just because you can for no other reason. That's so cool. Spend time in silence, in nature, and sing devotional songs. Mother Mary says to me, when we use our mantras, our chants, and our songs from our heart, we align our emotional body to the heartbeat of the Divine Mahaba. We get so blissed out. It's an eight-point program. Anyone can do it, and it's all free. And when you do that, boom, boom, you're in a state what I call paradise. And you know, for gossip, I love this, because I'm in Europe all the time. I ask the audience who come to see me, and, and they all meditate, which is cool that I got how many of you here are now living in paradise that prophesized time of heaven on earth you know 10 to 20 percent of the people say I am well, that's, fantastic. Woo! that's really that's fantastic. cool and they're doing it from lifestyle choice nothing else whether you're a Buddhist you're a Jew you're an atheist it doesn't matter if you live this type of lifestyle miracles happen it, it's the rapture comes the revelations come the visions come and you're just in that zone and it's just a cool cool place to be and it's and it's really simple and, and it's, it's really so available simple. you know Jesus right. said ask and you will receive so right. you just say please I want you know if you don't believe you just say I ask for an experience of divinity of holiness that is so powerful it will knock my socks off and permanently remove me from all doubt and when you do that as Jesus said ask you receive and you ask from here not from here but from sincerity like Give me an experience of divinity that is so powerful, I will be forever moved beyond all doubt. As soon as you put that out to the universe, the universe goes, lay it on a brother. And you go, wow. It's that simple. Amen, sister. Amen, sister. Go sister. get them, girl. Holy roller. Oh, <laughs> I expect Burt Lancaster to come out. <laughs> go, girlfriend. <laughs> Language Actually, we had a preacher on last week, and it's like this is like preacher month at the yeah, stadium. Yeah, it's cool. You can't help it, you know. Yeah, no. It's just no. It's it's interesting because yeah, it's, it's cool. people are on fire now. I mean, they you know are. that that love is really just starting to to explode you know, out. You and know? it's science. Guess what? 
we're in the photon belt, so they say. So we're in a, sp a space of energy that is so conducive to an awakening and a remembrance of who we are, and it's in ourselves, and it's like that energy just comes into us, and it's like, yeah, I'm not my mind, I'm not my body, I'm not limited. I don't need to suffer anymore. Suffering is so passé. Joy's in. You think, it's, you think it's in? Oh, cool. Yeah, it's the coolest place to be. Enjoy. So it's on one of those charts, like <laughs> suffering out, joy in. Yeah, suffering out, joy in. out. <laughs> prana, Light in, prana, prana in. in. Yeah, food out. All prana right, in. so we got the Esquire, we got the new... Uh, the new terminology, <laughs> Dow power, prana power, joy. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and when you travel the world sharing this fire, yeah. I mean, you find that people are really yeah. lighting up. Well, they're already there. So right. it's like hanging out with like-minded people, you know. People either come to see me because they're curious and they think, who is this strange woman? Or they come to support the work and they, or they're really in that experience themselves. You know, there are a lot of people who are in, in spaces of consciousness that are so deeply satisfying and so honoring. You know, it doesn't matter what model of reality you create, provided your model of creality, reality creates no harm on this planet. Or no separation. Yeah, no a separation, lot of things seem know? to create yeah. separation. <laughs> It's surprisingly yeah, enough. Yeah. I mean, I'm really focused on the one people, one planet agenda. You know, we have all the resources. Like last year, Mother Mary manifested, and she said to me, you're in a position of talking to a lot of people. You know, in three years, I've spoken to over 500 million people. Okay, that's, that's a lot of people. That's watch our show okay. every week, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, make so that a, few more. A, tr a trillion now. You've <laughs> You know, go now. <laughs> go now. And Mother Mary, she came to me in my meditation and she said, look, I want you to give the world one message from me. And I went, anything. You know, like when Mary comes, it's like such a blessing. Watch Bridging Heaven. No. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, the message I have is that there is no need for suffering on this planet anymore. You have all the intelligence, all the resources, all the information, all the tools to end it now. All you lack is the desire. You know, I don't desire to be in a world of suffering anymore and there's no need. We can practice the Luscious Lifestyles program, the Eight Point Plan. We can become altruistic. We can tune in on the internet. We can receive information about what we're here for and work together in harmony and, well, and create some change. Yeah, we're, we're, we're down to the end again. I know this show went really fast. If you want any information about Kailish, about Jasmine. Alan, 805-687-2053. We love you. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you soon. Good night. God bless you. Mm -hmm.